Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 32nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, with your spirit. and welcome as we come together to celebrate this 32nd Sunday in the year. Welcome to you wherever you are, and please join in with the responses as we pray together this morning. Our response to the psalm today is, my soul is thirsting for God. We know that we thirst, and often to quench that thirst, we go after things that are not of God. For the times perhaps in the last week that we have found ourselves trying to quench the thirst of our lives in places where we're not going to be able to do that, let's ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness, but most of all, the courage to move to God so that our thirst may be quenched. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And we pray, glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her, and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. He who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for he will find her sitting at his gates. To fix one's thoughts on her is perfect understanding, and he who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care. 
because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she graciously appears to those to them in their parts and meets them in every thought. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. For you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord, my God. For you, you, my my soul is thirsting, O Lord, Lord, my my God. O God, you are my God. At dawn I seek you. For you, my soul is thirsting. For you, my flesh is pining, like a dry, weary land without water. For For you, you, my my soul soul is thirsting, O Lord, Lord, my my God. God. I have come before you in the sanctuary to behold your strength and your glory. Your loving mercy is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. For For you, you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord, Lord, my God. I will bless you all my life. In your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. With joyful lips, my mouth shall praise you. For For you, you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord, Lord, my my God. When I remember you upon my bed, I muse on you through the watches of the night. For you have been my strength. In the shadow of your wings, I rejoice. For For you, you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord, Lord, my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who do not hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Watch, therefore, and be ready. The Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven shall be compared to ten maidens who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, They took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those maidens rose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, Perhaps there will be not enough for us and for you. Go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. 
And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other maidens came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What is the quality of your life? It seems to me that that is the real question asked in today's gospel. It's about the quality of our living here and now. You know, friends, neuroscientists say that our brains are wired for survival, and therefore Recent research shows that we spend about 48% of our time thinking about the future, 12% of our time processing the past, 28% of our time in the present, and the other 12% is spent trying to connect the dots, or the thoughts and images that have perhaps been vague to us, that we cannot simply just quantify them. You see, our minds are constantly at work, categorizing and analyzing and labeling. And most of us live with racing and obsessive minds. Some spiritual teachers refer to this as the monkey mind. Our minds jump from idea to idea, thought to thought, scenario to scenario. And as our liturgical year fast draws to a close, Matthew's Gospel asks us to consider the quality of our lives here and now. In today's parable, we are offered a stark and sobering reminder of the fate of those who live lives with quality and depth and those who do not. As with all parables, there is a double meaning in this parable too. It's about a wedding celebration, but it is also about something else, namely the invitation of God and the invitation that God offers to us, the invitation to live our lives with some depth. You see, God never coerces anybody, and anyone who even suggests that God is coercive does not really understand God, because God is one who invites and does not coerce. I want to suggest three things for our reflection today. The first is, before we simply just dismiss the foolish in the parable, let's think about that again. The two extremes in the parable are to make a point. But if we are honest about it, none of us are completely foolish and none of us are completely wise. Each of us has aspects of both the foolish and the wise within us. You know, there's always something that we want to change in our lives. We want to change something in our lifestyle. We often intend to do many good things, many noble things, but simply just don't do them. Maybe we owe somebody an apology. Maybe there is someone that we intended to contact or to visit. Maybe we've been putting something off. 
And the parable reminds us that it is either now or perhaps never. All of us, like the foolish in the parable, delay doing things, things that are important for us and for others. On the other hand, each of us also has something of the wise within us. We have been trying to illuminate the world by the way that we live God's word and try to put it into practice. That's why we are here, because we listen to the word so that we can go and put it into practice. And so I think this parable invites us to celebrate our wisdom, yet to recognize our foolishness or the foolishness within us that still needs to be transformed. We are both wise and foolish. It's our ability to see and to know that within us that somehow affects the depth with which we live. A person who lives a deep quality of life can identify the foolish and the wise within themselves. The second reflection is, how do we live in the present? How do we live in watchfulness? Because it's quite clear that those in the parable were not watchful. It was because half of the women in the gospel did not live in the present that they missed out on the coming of the bridegroom. I'm not suggesting that we do not need to prepare for the future, but it means that we live in the present with depth, that we are aware of the here and the now, that we live in the present moment with gratitude for all that this unrepeatable moment has to offer. That we do what we need to do here and now because there is no time better than the here and the now, than the present for what we need to do. And so a watchfulness or the watchfulness that we hear about in this gospel is a quality or a disposition of the heart. It is our ability to live consciously in the now. Perhaps the oil that we need to keep our lamps burning brightly, to live in the here and the now, in the present, is often little drops of kindness or love or patience or joy or selflessness. These are the things that we should never delay. These are the things that indicate we are living watchfully. And the third and final reflection is about the oil provider. It seems to me we need to also reflect on the oil provider in this parable. Because if the oil represents the good works inspired by a living relationship with God, the oil provider is the dispenser of those gifts and those good works. To be prepared in one's heart and mind to welcome the Lord is a quality or a state of being that is discerned, that is learned, that is refined and lived over time. It is due to a relationship with the oil provider. And so we work on this continually through a lifelong journey that will hopefully lead us to the eternal marriage banquet, to use the imagery of the gospel. And so there is a big difference between knowing of the oil provider. Many Christians do know of the oil provider. They do know of God. And that's a big difference between living in relationship with the oil provider. 
allowing the provider, consciously allowing the provider an intentional space in our daily lives. And so we might be prompted to ask as we reflect on this parable, what is the place of the oil provider in my life? What is the quality of your life? Can you see the wise and the foolish? How watchful are you really? And do you have a relationship of depth with the oil provider? Are you living in and delighting in the present or just simply existing because you are here? So we have heard God's word. Let's now respond to that word by making a profession of faith as we pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The oil provider listens to us and hears our pleas. And so with confidence, we come before God with our prayers. For the church, that we, clergy and lay people, will thirst for wisdom in choosing how to present the gospel tradition in new and meaningful ways. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our leaders that God will grant them wisdom to developing effective ways to lead our country towards justice and dignity for all, utilizing the opportunities the global crisis and the changes offer us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all women and children, particularly those at risk in homes where violence is the norm, that God will protect them from harm and help them to seek and find the support they may need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who have died, especially in this pandemic, that God will welcome them into his presence and comfort those who grieve. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own intentions, Take a moment to place before the Lord all your intentions, those both spoken and unspoken, in the knowledge that God will give you the wisdom to deal with them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we offer you these, our prayers. We pray that they would help us to be watchful so that we can respond to you with all our hearts, through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes, 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of all our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all of His holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, gave you thanks, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, Duncan his assistant, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, 
as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. It was the Lord Jesus who taught us to call God our Father, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's spend a moment now praying for peace in our own hearts, in our families, our communities, our country, and indeed the world. And we pray together, Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who asks us to be watchful and wait. How blessed are we who are called to share in this supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us, our family, our friends, and all people to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. 
Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Nourished by the sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this Mass today, wherever you are. And we wish you a very blessed Sunday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ to love and serve God by loving and serving one another. Thanks be to God.